We got SMU versus Clemson for the ACC championship game. Let me ask y'all something. How do you view Clemson right now in terms of the hierarchy of where they lie in college football? Do you still think that they are a elite program up there with Ohio State, Georgia, or Alabama? Or are they a tier two program that, you, you know, every year you get a little bit hyped up about maybe them competing for a national championship, but it, it's just like they never really live up to the hype because I feel like Clemson, if they lose this game, this will be a fatal loss to their reputation because that would show how far Clemson has truly fallen from what they used to be. And it's been a while since we last saw Clemson in the college football playoffs. And Dabo Sweeney is just salivating to get back to that thing, especially with it expanding to 12 teams. You would think with the playoff field going from 4 to 12, it would be a guarantee that Clemson gets in every single year. But if you lose to Rhett Lashley and SMU, it would further confirm what a lot of us have been saying about Dabo in this program for the last couple of years, which is they're a good 9-10 win program, but that's their ceiling. They've come back down to earth. They no longer are the powerhouse or the dynasty that we used to view them as, which is why Clemson, when it comes to their reputation, they must win this game. If not, you go back into the pits of irrelevancy in college football. Nobody's ever going to view you as a big national brand anymore. And SMU, surprisingly, is a two and a half point favorite in this game. And you want to think that with how well Clemson recruits and you think about the Clemson brand, but SMU, I, I, let's be honest. If you're watching this right now, you probably haven't watched that much of SMU this year. I have because I love Red Lashley. As a matter of fact, I was a huge fan of Red Lashley when he was Miami's offensive coordinator. I want Mario Cristobal to get fired and get replaced by Red Lashley because this dude is a fantastic coach. Every year we keep asking, is Texas back? Is Miami back? Is this team back? Is this team back? SMU is back, people. Some of y'all forget what SMU used to be back in the 80s when it was illegal to pay players. I mean, they got the death penalty, and nobody ever thought that they would make it back to this point. And yet, in their first year, in a major power for a conference, they are competing for a conference title. This is a program that won the American Athletic Conference last year. They are a well-coached team. They got a great coaching staff, a good offensive coordinator, a good defensive coordinator. And a lot of the players that they have... You know, they've gotten from some of the biggest states in the nation when it comes to producing high-level talent out of high school, Texas, Cali, South Florida. This SMU team is not to be overlooked. And when you think about the differences between these two teams, SMU offensively is way more consistent than what Clemson has been offensively. This year, Clemson has been very streaky. When you look at the statistics, they mislead you because statistically, Clemson looks like a juggernaut offensively. But when you watch them and some of the games when they've gone up against some of the better defenses in the ACC, like Virginia Tech, Pitt, they weren't really that good. And when you look at some of their out-of-conference games against the SEC opponents they went up against, South Carolina, Georgia, they couldn't even get the 20 against those teams. K. Klubnik is really erratic. You know, if Clemson is trying to win this game, he has to get out to a hot start. He's one of those players that if he starts the game out hot, he's going to have a good game. But if he starts out cold, it's not going to be a good afternoon from him. So it's very important that Garrett Riley has a, about 10, 15 plays scripted that can help K. Klubnik get hot and gain confidence early in this game. Now, SMU offensively, they got speed everywhere. They are one of the more explosive offenses in all of college football. They average nine yards per play, which is seven best in the nation. They got a lot of depth at wide receiver. Quarterback Kevin Jennings has been pretty good this year, but like K. Klubnik, he can be a little bit erratic in his own right. He had three interceptions. And they're a close win against Duke. But what separates these two offenses is that SMU 
is more consistent in terms of being able to put up 28, 30 points per game. But with Clemson offensively, you really don't know what to expect from them because K. Klubnik, you know, he could ball out one week and play terrible the next week. It's just that one team has a more consistent, <coughs> excuse me, one team has a more consistent quarterback than the other. And secondly, you know, you have a Clemson team that, yeah, they got talent at wide receiver, but they're not as deep at that position as what SMU is. Believe it or not, although Clemson has out-recruited SMU under Rhett Lashley, Rhett Lashley has done a really good job of developing the guys on his roster and also being able to find some gems in the transfer portal. Now, SMU, what I believe gives them the slight edge in this game is their red zone defense. Clemson has a really good defense. Not as good as what we have been accustomed to seeing out of Clemson, but they're a really solid defense. SMU, on the other hand, though, in the red zone, with how good their defense has been against the run, they got the ninth best run defense in college football, and they got the 13th best red zone defense in college football. The reason why those two statistics go hand in hand is because when you get into the red zone area, your playbook is condensed. You got 300 plays on your play sheet, and then you probably get that slice to half to probably about 90, 120, because in the red zone area, everything is so condensed, hence why you probably want to run the football. Well, if it's hard to run, on the defense like SMU that ranks in the top 10 and rushing yards per game allowed, giving up 101.5, it forces K. Klubnik to have to throw the football and put it in the tight spaces. Do you trust K. Klubnik in the red zone? Because I don't. I don't really think he has the greatest decision making. However, he is a really good athlete. But with SMU being good against the run, they can contain K. Klubnik, keep him in the pocket, force him to have to beat them with his arm, and that's how I think Clemson can get in trouble in this game. They probably can have success moving the ball down the field on this SMU defense because this isn't a completely flawless defense. Their secondary has surrendered a lot of yards through the air, but it makes this defense so great why they don't give up more than 20 points per game is because once you get into that red zone area, That's when they really play their best football. That's the strength of this defense. They probably say, we're going to let you get whatever you want to, but once you get to the 20, this is our territory. You're going to have to fight for everything, which means Clemson is going to have to trot out that special teams unit. And they've had several block kicks this year. You know, Clemson, from a special team standpoint, they suck. Special teams has been the Achilles heel for this program the last two or three years. Now, what I love about Clemson defensively, though, is that they're really good at forcing takeaways. They do it way better than what SMU does. And Kevin Jennings, I believe he can give you a few turnovers. He can give you some good field position. But can you make the most of it? Because once you get into the red zone, it's tough sledding, which is why I love SMU to win this game. I love Dabo Sweeney. He's one of my favorite coaches ever, NFL, college football. I love everything that he stands for, but it, it, it's just tough to see Clemson winning this one. And some of y'all may call me crazy, but Red Lashley is a damn good football coach. A lot of folks do not know just how good of a coach SMU has right now. He's doing way more flex. He's been able to revive a, a dead program that's been in the dirt for about the last couple of decades a lot of people forget that SMU used to be a powerhouse in college football back in the 80s you know and now it's legal to pay these players SMU could put themselves on the map with this win think about what appearance in the college football playoffs would mean for the brand in the image of SMU football They don't really get a lot of national televised games. So being on the stage like that probably would be a lot of people's reintroduction to SMU. A lot of you older college football fans probably going to be looking at SMU in the playoffs like, oh, yeah, I I remember SMU football. I remember when they used to be good. I remember when they were paying players underneath the table and now it's legal to do so. Like people keep talking about brand. I heard the 
uh, the analysts breaking down the playoff rankings, and they were talking about brand like if SMU loses, like are they gonna fall victim to the brand bias? Like people forget what SMU used to be back in the day. Go watch the Pony Express thirty for thirty if you don't know what I'm talking about. Like SMU, you 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 feel me? A lot of y'all gotta put some more respect on this team. Because coming in, people questioned just how good were they going to be. Nobody thought they would suck. But if you would have thought that SMU before the season was going to be in the ACC title game, bro, if you would have told me that, I would have been like, ah, I love Ray Lashley, but uh, you, you sure about that? I might have to time travel to the future with you. you. You know, SMU is a really good squad. And the fact that they've gotten to this point, not having as talented as a roster as what Clemson has is a testament to how well coached this team is. And I believe when SMU wins this game, it's going to be the nail in the coffin for how we used to perceive Clemson football. Because now you're going to start asking that question, is Dabo Sweeney ever going to get Clemson back into the national title picture? Because you would think that, you know, Clemson with, the history that they've had under Dabo Sweeney, they're an absolute lock to win this game with the guys they recruit, you know, the prestige that that Clemson logo has. But I, I mean, I, I think that their reputation is on the line in this game. And when SMU wins, I think it's further going to show how irrelevant Clemson now is in this new landscape of the transfer portal in NIL. And maybe Dabo Sweeney finally is forced to change his stance on how he goes about, you know, building a competitive roster year in and year out with the loss in this ACC title game.